Election Season 2020, A Serious Nexus for Cybercrime. Hi, I'm Ken Ray, welcoming you into Episode 204 of The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. Someone is trying to undermine this year's election. And someone is trying to steal your money. The good news is there are steps you can take to fight both. We'll get into all of it on this edition of The Checklist, brought to you by Secure Mac. Someone is trying to undermine this year's elections. Actually, several someone seem to be. The FBI and the Director of National Intelligence held a press conference Wednesday night saying that Russia and Iran are trying to interfere with this year's election in very personal-seeming ways. They're emailing people, specifically Democrats, according to a report from CNET. Now, you may wonder how they got the names and emails of actual individuals. It's because the information is just out there. According to CNET, it's unclear how Iran and Russia obtained the voter registration information, though much of it is publicly available in multiple states, and others have been exposed in data breaches in the past. So, that's fun. The CNET piece goes on to say the director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, said both countries have obtained some voter registration data, which Iran used to send spoof emails designed to intimidate voters. This data can be used by foreign actors to attempt to communicate false information to registered voters that they hope will cause confusion, sow chaos, and undermine your confidence in American democracy, Radcliffe said in a hastily called news conference Wednesday evening. The director of national intelligence said the spoof emails from Iran were designed to intimidate voters, incite unrest, and damage President Donald Trump. It would be interesting to know how they think it was doing that, since the emails are actually trying to coerce people into voting to re-elect the sitting president. Now, it doesn't seem to have been the FBI that said Democrats were being targeted. I did hear one news story that said that, and the CNET story says that as well. CNET heard that from the cybersecurity company FireEye. They say the emails targeted Democratic voters in four states— John Hultquist, FireEye's senior director of analysis, is quoted in the piece as saying, In recent years, Iranian information operations have continued to push boundaries using bold and innovative approaches. However, this incident marks a fundamental shift in our understanding of Iran's willingness to interfere in the democratic process. While many of their operations have been focused on promoting propaganda in pursuit of Iran's interests, This incident is clearly aimed at undermining voter confidence. The one thing everybody wants everybody to know is that these intimidation methods are just that. Intimidation. They're trying to scare people out of voting or make people think that their vote won't count. Members of the U.S. Senate pointed out these intentions. On Wednesday, says CNET, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence Chairman Marco Rubio, Republican of Florida, and Vice Chairman Mark Warner, Democrat of Virginia, released a joint statement ensuring the security of voter infrastructure. Our adversaries abroad seek to sow chaos and undermine voters' belief in our democratic institutions, they wrote, including the election systems and infrastructure that we rely on to record and properly report expressions of voters' will. They may seek to target those systems or simply leave the impression that they have altered or manipulated those systems in order to undermine their credibility and our confidence in them. Seeking to strike a more reassuring tone was the head of the FBI. Quoting CNET again, FBI Director Chris Wray said during the conference that access to voter registration data doesn't mean that your votes can or will be altered We've been working for years as a community to build resilience in our election infrastructure, and today that infrastructure remains resilient, Ray said. You should be confident that your vote counts. From 
trying to steal your confidence to trying to steal your personal information and maybe your personal money. Phishing is not a new topic for the checklist. That's P-H-I-S-H, that kind of phishing. We've talked about that here before. Though using voting as the lure is something we haven't discussed. The Associated Press ran a piece over the weekend outlining phishing attempts centered on the current election cycle. The AP says the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Better Business Bureau, and cybersecurity experts have recently warned of new and increasingly sophisticated online fraud schemes that use the election as an entry, reflecting both the proliferation of political misinformation and intense interest in this year's presidential and Senate races. Two things working in the bad guy's favor right now. First, there's that heightened political interest. And second, a lot of us are handling our own cybersecurity for the first time. Quoting the Associated Press again, online scams have flourished as so many of life's routines move online during the pandemic. The FBI reported that complaints to its cybercrime reporting site jumped from 1,000 a day to 3,000 to 4,000 a day since the pandemic began. While a lot of those were COVID-related earlier this year, it is election season. Bad guys know that, and they know how to use it. Sam Small is chief security officer at Zero Fox, which is a digital security firm based in Baltimore. He tells the Associated Press, psychologically, these scams play to our desire to do something, to get involved, to donate, to take action. Bad guys go where the heat is. They change their tactics to fit current events, whether those are natural disasters, a pandemic, or an election. Give them something to work with, and they'll find a way to make a dollar, says Small. And there is plenty out there to work with. We talked earlier about the voter registration information that's available online. On top of that, the AP article says this summer, Zero Fox found a large cache of personal data for sale. The data dump included the phone numbers, ages, and other basic demographic information for thousands of Americans. What made the data remarkable was that it also contained partisan affiliation the cherry on top for anybody interested in buying the material, Small said. Someone could use that to pretend to be a political action committee raising money, to try to get your personal information, or your account numbers, he said. Some pretty big problems laid out so far. What can you do in the face of all of it? We'll talk about that in a moment, but first a word about MacScan 3 from SecureMac. We talked earlier about the rise in cybercrime reports since the pandemic began. You might not be using a computer more than you were before, but chances are you're using your computer more than you were before. That means you need to be more vigilant. MaxScan 3 can help. MaxScan 3 is a great defense against malicious software attacks aimed at your Mac. It's developed by SecureMac, trusted names in computer security and developers of exceptional security software for the Mac for over 20 years. MaxScan 3 detects and removes Mac malware, catches key loggers, removes tracking cookies, and provides full-range or targeted scanning, all without crowding up your hard drive or slowing down your machine. Sign up for a free 30-day trial today at securemac.com slash macscan. Then when you decide to buy, buy for less. You can take a little off the subscription to MacScan 3 with offer code CHECKLIST. Try it first, watch it kick those tracking cookies to the curb, Then when you're ready to buy, buy for less with offer code CHECKLIST at securemac.com slash MacScan. Problems. We've had a couple of big ones today. Of course, on the checklist, we don't like to come with problems. 
without actions you can take as well. Sometimes, like with the voter intimidation emails, the action you can take is just being aware. Your information may be out there. People may email you with that information. They may try to scare you. Knowing that that is coming from thousands of miles away, knowing that though they may have your personal information, it's not personal, knowing that this is happening, well, it's like G.I. Joe said, knowing is half the battle. Being aware of what's going on can be a good defense. Now, the phishing thing's a bit more concrete. With the intimidation emails, they're trying to get in your head. The phishing emails are trying to get in your bank account. We've got advice to keep that from happening from a couple of sources. One is the National Cybersecurity Alliance, and the other is that piece from the Associated Press we were talking about earlier. Here's what the NCSA says first. Be wary of an email that asks you to confirm personal information. If you get an email from an organization asking you to confirm information that that organization should have, be suspicious. The NCSA says keep an eye out for emails requesting you to confirm personal information that you would never usually provide, such as banking details or login credentials. Do not reply or click any links, and if you think there is a possibility that the email is genuine, you should search online and contact the organization directly. Do not use any communication method provided in the email. If something about a website or an email address feels hinky, trust that instinct. The NCSA suggests hovering over links to make sure that the place that they're about to send you is where you actually want to go, though again, you might just as easily and maybe more safely search up the site yourself. Also, really look at the email address. Bad guys will build bogus variations meant to appear authentic, the example the NCSA gives is at mail.airbnb.work. That one's fake. At airbnb.com, that would be legit. Of course, there are the poorly written phishing emails. Those are fairly easy to spot. Emails with attachments should set off your spidey sense. The NCSA says alarm bells should be ringing if you receive an email from a company out of the blue that contains an attachment, especially if it relates to something unexpected. The attachment could contain a malicious URL or Trojan, leading to the installation of a virus or malware on your PC or network. Even if you think an attachment is genuine, it's good practice to always scan it first using antivirus software. Now, their final tip leads us back to the phishing scams tied to the election. They say the message is designed to make you panic. Though considering the state of things today, I would say designed to play on your emotions. For traditional phishing, the NCSA says it is common for phishing emails to instill panic in the recipient. The email may claim that your account may have been compromised, and the only way to verify it is to enter your login details. Alternatively, the email might state that your account will be closed if you do not act immediately. Ensure that you take the time to really think about whether an email is asking something reasonable of you. If you're unsure, contact the company through other methods. Again, don't click a link in the email they just sent you. Now, Democrat or Republican, there is also a sense of urgency around the 2020 election and bad guys will try to capitalize on it. The Associated Press says beware of pushy pollsters or fundraisers or emails or websites that use emotionally loaded language that makes you angry or fearful, a tactic that experts say plays on human psychology. One identity theft expert the AP spoke with says right now is a tricky time because there are legitimate organizations out there that are trying to help people register to vote. But you don't have to act in the moment. Take a few minutes and do a little homework. I know, your candidate needs help, right? Yeah, he or she will probably still need help in 15 minutes. 
quoting the AP one more time, before donating to any group that reached out by email or text, check their website or look to see if they're registered as a charity or a campaign. Does the organization have a physical location and phone number? Scammers often do not. And now there is one more step. Let other people know. Talk to friends and family members about some of these scams. You don't have to lecture. You certainly don't have to scare them. You just want to make sure they know what's up. Of course, an easy way to do that is to let them know about this show as well and the associated website. It is securemac.com slash checklist. There you'll find notes for this show. You'll find notes for the last show. You can actually just give them the URL and tell them that it's a safe URL, of course, because, yeah. They'll be able to listen to this show right here and then click the associated links to the uh, source material that we've used. And they can actually do that for every show. We have whole shows on fishing and tons of other stuff that people need to be aware of. It all starts at one place. SecureMac.com slash checklist. If you have a question you would like to ask or a topic you would like to hear us hit, our email address is checklist at securemac.com. That address again is checklist at securemac.com. And if you can't remember that, please do remember this. You're listening to The Checklist, brought to you by SecureMac. And we'll talk to you next week.